What's in a street's name? How are they chosen? What does a street name do to property values and community sentiment? What happens if a street name, once regular for its time, becomes taboo or the word's meaning changes? In Romeo and Juliet, the young Miss Capulet poses one of literature's most famous questions. What's in a name? When it comes to a street name, the answer is a lot. Street names tell stories. They tell us if a neighborhood is expensive or affordable, brand new or decades old. With street names alone, we can uncover all kinds of insights. Well, that's what the New York Times has told me. Here are four street names, Main, Second Street, Snowball and Maple Street. Which street name increases property values, do you think? We will delve into these as we go throughout the video. But before we get into the serious side of street naming, let's get out some of the giggles. Reader's Digest recently completed a survey of the most amusing street names in every USA state. But don't worry, we will look at other countries too. Starting in Alabama, we have Booger Hollow Road. Alaska is Yellow Snow Road. In Arizona is Bucket of Blood Street, where the street earned its moniker from the 1800s as the street was a place for the gunfighting, drinking and gambling kind. Arkansas has the most bizarre street name here. I'm not even going to try and pronounce this California name. It looks like one of Elon Musk's kids names. The city of Fountain in Colorado has this odd street name, but rather rightfully it is omitted from city maps. Connecticut has the famed Muffin Man to thank for this one. This one in Delaware comes from the dying of horseshoe crabs that come ashore to spawn. A whole video could be done on Florida street names, but the winner goes to I Dream of Jeannie Way, named after a 1960s TV show. In Georgia, it's Five Forks Trickham Road, but there is only four forks on the road after one closed, and the Trickham comes from old law that a shop owner used to swindle people on the street. True or not, still interesting to know how legends of streets evolve. In Hawaii, I'm not sure on how to pronounce this one, but this translates to whale genitals. And in Ohio, we have Chicken Dinner Road, named after an infamous dinner between the Lamb family and the governor. In Illinois, it's Supreme Court. Not a bad name, considering you have many streets named after court, including a basketball court in Mississippi and a tennis court drive in Tennessee. In Indiana, it's Candy Castle Lane, and this comes from a town in Indiana called Santa Claus, where the town has numerous Christmas-themed names. In Kansas, it's Gravy Train Lane, in honor of a pet food company. In Kentucky, it's Billy Goat Strut Alley, on the corner of Nanny Goat. This one is truly odd, and I personally wouldn't want to live on this one. Imagine having to explain to someone on customer service the name of your street. Anyway, the street name is embedded in 19th century goat racing history. This one is from Louisiana. It's so difficult to say that it makes the list, and the challenges of this street name have resulted in parcels not being delivered properly or on time, and including lower house prices. And I can understand why. Imagine having to write it or spell it out every time someone asks for your address. In May, it's up the road, based on the dialogue between a tourist and a local. In Maryland, it's Liquor Laughter Lane. And in Massachusetts, it's Pleasant Street. This on its own is a great street name that would prompt higher community sentiment and property value. But according to residents, it's the cornering street of Roach that puts people off. In Michigan is Psycho Path. And in Minnesota, it's Pig's Eye Lake Road, named after a local called Pierre Pig's Eye Parent. In Mississippi, it's Memory Lane. And in Missouri, it's Kangaroo Court, which refers to a mock court of lax rules. But before we continue the journey through the other 25 states and other countries, let's explore some research. According to Love Property Group, who cite Stokemont Chartered Surveyors, Festive street names such as Reindy Road in Staffordshire, UK have a surprising impact on house prices and the words snowball with streets in Country Durham and Stockton on Tees all have 11.45% higher property values than the streets surrounding them. One way to look at this mindset is the game of Monopoly. The varying street names in Monopoly command higher values and word association plays a huge role. Take Mayfair over Old Kent Road. 
According to Property Investor Magazine, aspirational or well-to-do sounding street names add thousands of dollars of value to properties. And it's not just the name of the street, but the road hierarchy type as well. Living on a way or a street or a drive adds more value than living on a road, highway or avenue, even if it isn't actually an avenue. But it is the word boulevard that attracts the most community spirit and value. After a study of inventory from Domino Real Estate in 500 populous US cities, they found that houses on a boulevard sold for on average $343,000 more than its neighbors. And remember, it's the word boulevard on the street sign that adds the value, not whether or not the street actually is classed as a boulevard. Here is a list of Australia's most expensive streets and look at the difference in names now compared to the least expensive, even if these streets are in the same suburb. Even adding the word the in front of a street name raises prestige and value. Furthermore, in California, houses with the word maple in its name are the most coveted and have the highest prices. Social Science Research Network also stated that streets attached to popular and good-natured celebrities also attract a higher value, but not if the celebrity falls into disrepute. Let's look at the most common street name in America, Maine. There is a lot of them, and according to Zillow, having the word Maine in your street is worth 44% less than the average US home. This is because named streets are better than numbers due to human memory and association to either a good feeling or bad. And this is where word association affects the value of main street, road or avenue as well. Because the word main conjures up images of traffic, noise and chaos. Houses located on a street with the word main or a number are also harder to rent and or yield lower rental prices. Could you live on Willys Avenue or Dick Lane? Would you say it quieter in public when handing over your address to someone? What about streets where the name once considered normal soon has negative connotations? Take Epstein Street or Isis Street. While sounding normal and when maturity is applied, one can look past the negative parallels, but property values don't lie. Houses on any street with Epstein in its name have seen a 15% decline in value in the last year. It reminds me of the murder house theory. If you want to cheapen a house's value, just spread rumors that someone was murdered inside. And sometimes street names change names. And there are several reasons that this occurs. And residents seeking greater land value is not a valid reason for local authorities or geographic location boards to do so. But what are the valid reasons that a person or persons could bring a claim to their local jurisdictions? Street names are an essential aspect of our infrastructure, but disputes can arise when naming or renaming a street for various reasons. Here are some of the most frequent causes of street name controversies. Symbolic content of the name is one where a person, organization or event that was once honored with a street name is later deemed unworthy of the honor due to criminal activity or other reasons. Or a group of street names in a residential area may be viewed as underrepresentative of the local population. For instance, if a disproportionate number of streets are named after men and only few after women. There is also the linguistic form of the name, where street name signs written in a language or script that the local population does not use or can lead to controversy. Or street names that are too complicated to pronounce or spell, like that one in Mississippi that should change, or that they are too similar to another street name in the same area, can create communication issues for emergency services and postal carriers. Or believe it or not, local residents and businesses may oppose a planned change of an existing street name as it would require them to inform all relevant contacts of their new addresses, but I doubt this one will get through very often. However, in extreme circumstances, a name might be changed if the street is targeted by vandals because of the name of the street, or the name creates civil disobedience, or a neighborhood committee is formed that outlines valid reasons for the change from above. Street names and road signs region Upen Maumani and municipalities with language facilities are officially bilingual. However, some language activists argue that certain areas should be monolingual in favor of their own language. They believe that other languages do not belong on these signs and that it is a form of colonization of their language area. 
In some cases, these activists even vandalize street name signs and road signs to make the undesirable language illegible. This is particularly prevalent in the linguistic conflict in Vuren. Others contend that bilingualism of street names promotes mutual tolerance and individual understanding. They reject resistance to multilingual signs as territorial behavior towards speakers of other languages. Ultimately, the meaning of the names remains the same, regardless of the spelling or direct translation. In 2020, Berlin City announced that Mühlenstrasse would be renamed Anton Wilhelm Almalstrasse for different reasons, namely that the term Mühlen Moors, was considered racist by many inhabitants. The same occurred in Brazil, where Italy Avenue was renamed Brazil Avenue during World War II and beyond, but was renamed back in 1990. And in Morocco, they still have many francophone street names from the French colonial era. Arab nationalists have pressured the government to Arabize these and name them after Moroccan national heroes. To prevent the possibility of a street being named after someone who may later commit a crime or engage in other unfavorable activities, there is a well-known rule in Dutch municipalities. Streets cannot be named after a person until a certain number of years after their death. However, the Dutch royal family is exempt from this rule. Once a new prince or princess is born, public roads can be named after them. Critics of this exception argue that this implies that the Orange family will lead exemplary lives until their passing. Despite the high popularity of the royals, they are also fallible human beings who may make mistakes and should not be accorded places of honor beforehand. In the aftermath of the invasion of Ukraine, a philosophy consulting group partnered with the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs to launch Ukraine Street, a campaign that urges nations to change the names of streets where Russian embassies or consulates are located to Ukraine Street. This initiative, according to the foreign minister, is part of a larger effort to isolate Russia and deputinize the world. Additionally, Ukraine is conducting a de-Russification campaign, eliminating names of streets and plazas linked to Russian and Soviet history and replacing them with official Ukrainian names. Here is a picture of the Kyiv Road sign positioned outside the Russian embassy in London. And let's turn back to the other 25 obscure streets in the United States and a few from around the world. In Montana, it's Story Street, and this is interesting for different reasons. Bozeman residents know that virtually every street in their city is named after a person, and Story is named after a cattle driver and writer named Nelson Story. In Nebraska, it's Ninth and a Half Street. The street runs along the north-south boundary and when the city was formed from three pre-existing cities and when they went to rename the old numbered streets, the numbers didn't line up, so they decided on a nine and a half street. In Nevada, it's freshly brewed CT and not caught either, but decisively CT. In New Hampshire, it's North Sandwich Road. In New Jersey, it's Shades of Death Road in Great Meadows, which runs along an old haunted lake bed. In New Mexico, there is Bigfoot Road in a suburb named Cloudcroft. In New York, there is the corner of Harding and Kerrigan Streets. And in North Carolina, there is Bombproof Road. It is believed to be named this after a thermonuclear bomb hit a nearby farm in 1961, or it's rumored to be named after a horse that doesn't scare easily. In North Dakota, it's Winery Street. In Ohio, there is a seldom seen road and considered an oxymoron because the street actually is very visible with its double yellow road markings. In Oklahoma, there is the corner of this name, which means eagle, and this one, which means bear in the local indigenous language. In Oregon, there is Have It Your Way, which sounds similar to Have It Your Way. In Pennsylvania, there is Divorce Court. In Rhode Island, there is Leonard Jenner Drive in Portucket, which invites rhyming patterns. In South Carolina, there is the corner of Whiskey and Easy. In South Dakota, there is No Place. In Tennessee, there is Stinking Creek Road. And in Texas, there is Hairy Man Road in Round Rock, which is based on a local spooky legend. In Utah, there is Wayne's World Drive, named 
after local farmer Wayne Ballard. In Vermont, there is No Name Road. In Virginia, there is Red Rum Drive, which strangely is murder backwards. In Washington State, there is Toe Jam Hill Road, named after one of the tallest points in Kitsnap County. In West Virginia, there is Middle Grave Creek Road, named after the largest conical type burial mound in the USA, standing 62 feet high and dating back to 250 BC. In Wisconsin, there is Chicken in the Woods Road, and in Wyoming, there is North Absaroka Street, named after a proposed state made up of parts of Wyoming, South Dakota, and Montana in 1939. Now let's turn to around the world and to the UK where there is plenty of rude ones like Bell End, The Knob, Butt Hill Lane, Back Passage, Fanny Hands Lane, but these were all named before the modern language butchered them into rudeness. But some of the most unusual names are ones like Hanging Sword Alley, named after a fencing and sword fighting school. Crutched Friars, which has the derivation from Latin crux. There is St. Mary's Axe, named after the church that once held an axe said to have been used by Attila the Hun in slaying 11,000 English handmaidens. And there is French Ordinary Court, named after a 17th century French restaurant that existed on the passageway that served meals that fixed prices known as ordinaries. In Germany, there are still many controversial street names that are in need of a new identity, according to local German newsletter here, such as the Hindenburgstrasse, and there is also the Dominikstrasse, named after Hans Dominik, who has the moniker of Slayer of Cameroon. In Norway, particularly Bergen, Life in Norway newsletter reports that Bergen is in the process of no longer naming streets after men, as the city of Bergen states this is to create gender balance. In 2018, a council report showed that of Bergen's 229 streets and squares named after people, only 28 were named after women. In Australia, there is Upper Thong Street in Perth and Struth Street, which only Australians will probably understand, and there's also a Furphy Avenue. So it's very interesting to understand the context and value of your street just by its name alone. It's also an important factor in the purchase of a house, and especially checking the ramifications of such a name. Does it really matter? No, not really, but it still cannot hurt to understand the history and meaning behind your street name. So to the first question from the video, living on Maple Street has the highest value, then Snowball, followed by Main, and finally Second Street, or having a number in your street, as these tend to have lower values. Values. Thanks for watching.